When this Duke Blue Devils men's basketball team is hitting their shots from the outside, they are fun to watch. What an offense this is that John Shire has. Let's talk about it on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Lockdown Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Duke men's basketball back in the win column last night as the Blue Devils defeat the LaSalle Explorers by nearly 30 points to pick up their fourth win of the season. A couple of career performances from Tyrese Proctor and Sean Stewart. Duke shot the ball well from the outside. We discuss all of that and more coming up on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. Excited to be joined by my good pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert of Ball Durham here for the program to break down everything that we saw in this one and talk about what's ahead for the Stickman's basketball team. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and written review. Subscribe to our podcast feed. Watch us on uh, YouTube each and every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like this video. Share it with your friends. All that fun stuff. If you could do that, it would mean a lot to us here at Lockdown Blue Devils. Comment down below. I love interacting with you guys there in the comments. And, uh, yeah, thank you always for your continued support. So, without further ado, let's bring on the aforementioned Kevin Connolly from Ball Durham, who joins us as he does each and every week. Kevin, good to see you once again, and good to have another Duke basketball win for us to sit here and talk about. Thanks for having me, JJ. Happy Thanksgiving to you and all the listeners out there. No doubt about that. We'll get to uh, a little bit of Thanksgiving things later in the program here today. But I got to start with last night's win for Duke, defeating LaSalle by 29 points. Uh, Big takeaways from this one, Kevin. I think a lot of people, once again, kind of talking about a tale of two halves and a decisive Duke victory, although at the break, just a 10-point margin that Duke had. Yeah, I think the first thing you have to realize about this game, and we talked about it um, right after the Michigan State game, was this three-game stretch for Duke in the Blue Devil Challenge. Um, Bucknell, not a real good team. Southern Indiana, not a real good team. Uh, LaSalle was going to be your toughest team here in this three-game stretch, and um, we were just talking about it before the show. I mean, LaSalle is a, a really tough Big Five school from Philly. Um, you t- look at some of the other Big Five schools, uh, in the last couple of weeks, Penn beats Villanova. St. Joe's the other night goes to overtime in Rupp against Kentucky. So um, Duke couldn't take LaSalle lightly. They have a legend as their coach in Fran Dunphy. Um, so, yeah, 10-point lead at halftime. Uh, I, I know a lot of Duke fans probably think the sky is falling. Why aren't we up by more against a team like LaSalle? But they are a quality team coming out of the A-10 conference. Um, and then in the second half, uh, Tyrese Proctor and Kyle Filipowski take the game into their own hands and really create that separation for Duke, scoring 56 points in the second half. Yeah, 17 points on the night for Kyle Filipowski, who continues to kind of be the focal point of the Duke offense. 14 of his 17 came after the break. And then we saw career performances from Tyrese Proctor, a career-high 22 points, Sean Stewart, a career-high 16 points, and just 15 minutes of action. More on Stewart in just a little bit. But let's talk about that lead guard for Duke and Tyrese Proctor. 22 points to lead the way, a career high. We've been talking all offseason that he's going to be the best point guard in the country. We're going to continue to declare this. And once again, what a strong showing he had. Yeah, and the most impressive thing to, for me was obviously the shooting. He was 7-11 from the floor, 2 of 3 from three-point range. Really should have been 3 or four, three of 4 if not for uh, him not cutting his toenails um, on that nasty step back he had in the second half in the corner where his – the top of his shoe was just on the line, or it would have been a three-pointer. Um, and then the seven rebounds. I think the biggest thing for Duke, um, we've talked about it, is how are they going to rebound against bigger teams, and you need your guards to help out in rebounding. You can't have it solely on Kyle Filipowski or even Mark Mitchell. But the seven rebounds uh, last night from Tyrese Proctor really impressed me um, to go along with the shooting as well. And then, obviously, you still have the court vision with four assists. So um, one of the best games that Tyrese Proctor has played now in his year plus as a Blue Devil. 
Yeah, seven rebounds, like you said. And we talked last game. It was uh, Jared McCain who had the double-double for the Blue Devils with 17 points and 10 boards. McCain had six more rebounds himself in last night's game. I, I don't know, five games into it, man, we really are seeing a rebounding effort from even the guards on the Stoop team that are making it a point to crash the glass, grab it, push it, and run from there. But they're not necessarily always relying on Filipowski or Stewart there on the inside. Uh, Ryan Young, when he's there getting minutes for this Duke team, Mark Mitchell even. Like the guards want to be aggressive and attacking the glass as well, it seems. Yeah, and that's a point of emphasis. And I think also a great thing is that the guards know that anybody can run the floor for this team when they're on the court, probably outside of Ryan Young. So I think that's how I have to look at it, that like Tyrese Proctor can grab a rebound and just start pushing, or he can throw an outlet to a Mark Mitchell or a Kyle Filipowski or obviously Jared McCain and Jeremy Roach, Caleb Foster, whoever else is on the floor, that they don't necessarily need to be the ones to receive those outlet passes from the big guys. So I think John Shire has done a great job at instilling in uh, these the, the guards on this team that they have to help and rebound. And when they do, it makes the offense so much better because everyone else is able to get out and run in transition. Longtime friend of the program, Jordan Mann of the Big J and Little J Show, our guest each and every Monday here on the program, went to the game last night and uh, tweeted out some photos beforehand right as the game's getting going. And this was certainly talked about online. Uh, not the craziest, pun intended, environment uh, that Duke was walking into. It's a holiday break. You're getting set for Thanksgiving. Uh, the Cameron Crazy certainly didn't turn up like they typically do, Kevin, because of kind of the way the school schedule has situated itself. And yet, ultimately, it didn't matter. At, at some point, you might be a little nervous, right, that you're not going to get that traditional Cameron indoor environment, but it uh, ultimately didn't matter at all. Yeah, Cameron is still Cameron regardless. <laughs> um, doesn't matter, break, not break, big game, small game, whatever you want to want to categorize it as. Um, it's still iconic. Big time win for the Blue Devils. Nearly a 30-point victory for Duke over LaSalle. Let's talk about it. Let's dive into the box score. How about the career night for Sean Stewart? I want to talk about that and a little bit more after we take this time out here on Locked On Blue Devils today. Locked On Blue Devils today brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like such a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why I'm telling you, you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires First leading competitors. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, here we go. Let's get set. We'll move forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson. Kevin Connolly joins me as he does each and every week. Excited to be talking about everything going on in the Duke basketball world these days, including uh, a big win last night for the Duke Blue Devils with their win over the LaSalle Explorers. Nearly a 30-point victory for Duke. Kevin, just give us another big takeaway that you had from Duke's performance last night. Well, I, I think you have to kind of look at the shooting. I mean, obviously, we talked about Tyrese Proctor. Kyle Filipowski, as well, in that second half, started to get hot from three. Um, Jared McCain was two of four from three. And then end of the game, TJ Power, his last five minutes, he caught fire, three threes, nearly had a fourth in the final couple of seconds. That three went in and out, but Duke shooting 41% from three-point range uh, really stood out to me. Yeah, you look at uh, earlier this season, there was a game where we talked about Duke not shooting so great out of the breaks, but really heating up in the second half. Duke goes just two for nine in the first half, but then makes seven of 11 attempts in that second half of play uh, to, to really put this one away. Seven makes in the second half from three-point range, uh, which is great. I don't, I don't know what it is about the kind of the, the slower shooting starts for Duke, but the fact of the matter is they're starting to fall in the second half when it matters the most. To your point earlier, 56 points scored by Duke in the second half, and so we'll really take those improved shooting numbers. 
Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest thing you want to do in college basketball feels like is win that three point battle. Duke is nine of 22, LaSalle six of 24. Um, so yeah, Duke, Duke wins that battle and typically you're going to win the game. Um, free throws were about even, um, but obviously Duke just able to overpower LaSalle in that second half. All right, we've got to talk about it. Everyone really excited about what we saw from our friend Sean Stewart last night for the Duke Blue Devils. A career-high 16 points, 10 rebounds, a double-double. He made his first six shots from the floor and, again, walks away with a career-high 16 and 18 minutes of action. What did you make of number 13, Sean Stewart's performance? I mean, he is the definition of give everything you have for as long as you can, as long as you're on the court. I mean, this guy does not stop what the minute he checks in to the minute he checks out. Um, he's active. He's all over the place. Um, he's able to find space offensively underneath the basket for these big time dunks like we saw against Bucknell. Um, defensively, he's getting better. He's aggressive on the glass, as we saw last night with 10 rebounds. Um, yeah, it feels like his future is very bright, and he is consistently climbing up the depth chart. You look at the minutes last night. Sean Stewart gets 18, and Ryan Young, who's kind of considered the backup center, only gets nine. Um, it's pretty so, interesting, yeah. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like Sean Stewart is getting closer and closer to this team's seventh man and their first big man off the bench. I want Duke fans to comment down below what they think about that because I think that is a storyline to kind of follow. Southern Indiana coming up on um, – the Southern Indiana game is coming up for Duke here on Friday. And then, of course, they've got that big game at Arkansas next week. And everyone wants to know what to make out of this Duke basketball team and, and when Sean Stewart's going to turn the corner and kind of surpass – Ryan Young as that kind of second big off the bench, or first big, I should say, off the bench. So uh, I, I don't know. It looks like he's really making a strong case to get more of those minutes. He is, but but it's interesting. I mean, you don't want to really evaluate Ryan Young against Bucknell and against LaSalle and Southern Indiana. I mean, these are games that Sean Stewart should be in getting experience. I mean, um, we talked about it after the Michigan State game. I thought Ryan Young was the third best player on Duke in that game. Um, so, yeah, it's great for Sean Stewart uh, to get this experience, to put up these numbers, to stat pad a little bit. But um, I, I think when a, a big game comes or a pressure situation comes, John Shire is still going to feel more comfortable um, putting putting Ryan Young out on the floor, at least now, just because of the experience and leadership that he brings. So maybe not this Arkansas game, right, that we fully switch away to Sean Stewart. But who know, by the end of the year, maybe, maybe there is a chance. Exactly. Who knows? But I think um, with Arkansas coming up, I think um, you're probably going to see Ryan Young get a little bit more minutes uh, than Sean Stewart. But who knows? I haven't uh, jumped into the scouting report on Arkansas yet to see how they kind of play. I know they're typically always big and athletic. Um, so maybe Sean Stewart will be needed for a handful of minutes in that game as well. Really big day for Sean Stewart. You mentioned it. TJ Power knocks down three three-pointers for the Stuke basketball team. Uh, his first made shots in a basketball game from the floor for Duke. Had scored earlier this season when he went two for two from the free throw line, but for the first time ever, TJ Power made a couple of shots from the floor. The career night from Sean Stewart, but then you look at those freshman guards, Jared McCain, Caleb Foster, a relatively quiet night for those guys. Ultimately does not matter. Duke still wins handedly, but uh, we're going to be monitoring kind of the ups and downs of these freshman seasons the whole way through. So six points for Jared McCain, seven for Caleb Foster. Kevin. Yeah. J Jared McCain struggled, didn't score in the first half, had a couple of threes in the second half. Um, Caleb Foster, nothing's going to pop out to you on the stat sheet with seven points, three of eight shooting. Um, but that's okay. Like we've seen these guys perform in the big moments. So uh, again, I think these games from were more uh, for Sean Stewart. I was surprised TJ Power didn't get in until the last five minutes, and obviously he performed very well once he did with those three three-pointers. Um, I'm expecting him to probably get double-digit minutes against Southern Indiana. I think Southern Indiana is going to be a, a good way for Duke just to uh, keep their legs fresh in terms of their starters. This is a team um, that, let's be honest, is not very good. Um, I guess you can say it is a trap game, um, but as long as Duke has somewhat of their head on their shoulders – uh, they should come out of this game victorious on Friday. 
95-66, the final score. Duke defeats LaSalle. Big time win for John Shire and company in that one. All right, let's talk about what's next and a couple of big takeaways from the win last night after we take our last break here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. All right, let's talk to you about our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform out there in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS, it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and just watch those winnings roll on in. Prize Picks is the most fun that I've had, winning up to 25 times my money so far this football season. And now that basketball season is here, I could play that as well. You select two or more players, like we said, pick more than or less than on projected stats, place your entry, and let it roll, baby. Prize Picks is absolutely awesome, offering a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball and football games, if you have a player that exits the game in the first half due to injury and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. How amazing is that? Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, final few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Kevin Connolly, who is the site expert for Ball Durham. Ball underscore Durham on X, balldurham.com in your search bar. What can people find there, Kevin? Anything you potentially could ever want about Duke basketball. Um, obviously we're midway, or I guess shouldn't say we're midway into the season. I don't want to rush things that fast, but, uh, we're coming up towards the end of November, um, about five, six games into the season. Um, and we're rolling, um, game recaps, game previews, um, still on top of recruiting stuff, opinions, anything, uh, you could potentially want on this Duke basketball team. We got it over there. Also, uh, our football coverage for the year is wrapping up. Um, so yeah, we still got a ton of stuff over there at Ball Durham. Come give us a, a follow and come give us a read every single day. Yeah, that coaching carousel might get a little crazy with many teams calling Mike Elko's number. We'll see if he's able to hold on uh, with the Blue Devils here this offseason. Talking about basketball, though, 4-1 and one start for John Shire's team. They've got Southern Indiana coming up on Friday. Something impressive to me in last night's game, yes, it's LaSalle. That's the immediate rebuttal that I'm addressing before I even make the point. But Duke only turned the basketball over five times in the entire game. No turnovers from Tyrese Proctor, who continues to just be on a great run of play with very limited turnovers so far this season. I love that. The shots weren't falling in the first half, but unlike, say, the first stretch of minutes in that Michigan State game, that's all it was. All it was was that you can't really make shots. It wasn't a combination of all these turnovers taking place as well. Well, yeah, and that's what you're getting with Tyrese Proctor on the ball. I mean, he didn't have a turnover in that Michigan State game. This is three straight games for him without a turnover. He did have three against Arizona and had one against Dartmouth. So it's three clean games right now for Tyrese Proctor. So it doesn't matter who you play. I mean, these guys are still Division I basketball players. They're still capable of playing this game at a high level and obviously pressuring um, a guard. And and you also have to give credit to Tyrese Proctor. I mean, anybody – Uh, can have a turnover, a bad pass, Uh, you lose your footing, and the other team comes away with a steal. Many things can happen in in this uh, sport we all love. Um, But for him to go three straight games without a turnover is certainly impressive. Let's hope it continues for the rest of the team as well. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of Proctor on the ball, but everyone else seems to be taking care of it as well. Two of the five last night belonged to Jared McCain, the young freshman for the Stoop team. But I think everybody has done a really good job of taking care of the basketball on the other end of the floor. LaSalle only had nine turnovers. So uh, the Duke defense, yes, at times really held LaSalle to uh, kind of limited scoring numbers, uh, forced a bunch of missed shots for the Explorers. It wasn't like this overly aggressive Duke defense that was forcing a whole lot of turnovers over the course of 40 minutes. Yeah. And that's what you want to see. I mean, uh, again, LaSalle is a quality team. They do have good guards. Um, but I, I didn't find much to fault with this Duke defense last night. Um, they were still defending at a high level and forcing LaSalle into tough shots that they weren't able to make. 
the one point I did see some folks make, so let's talk about it for a second, on the defensive end of the floor, if you look at points in the paint, Kevin, of nearly half of those points for the Explorers, 30 of them came inside the paint, and this is a LaSalle team that did not have a single player over six foot five on their roster, and yet were able to kind of make those easy looks, get easy looks at times at the rim. Is that a concern? It's a little different not having Mark Williams or Derek Lively the second like last season. We've talked about that all off season, but it is as as Brendan Marks talked about a little bit earlier uh, this season uh, on our podcast here. You do start to wonder. Okay, remember Caden Shedrick? Remember Ernest Uday Jr possibilities out there for Duke in the transfer portal. I wonder if that's going to be more of a conversation as we go into more primetime games. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't buy into it as much um, for this game. Um, we still won by nearly 30. Yeah, you still win by 30. Obviously, that the, the height advantage and um, strength that Arizona showed in the paint certainly was a factor. Um, it wasn't that much of a factor against Michigan State. Um, yeah, LaSalle racked up almost half of their points in the paint, but, um, Duke, they, they were, they were playing aggressive. Um, I, I would just wouldn't read that much into it, uh, from last night. Now, um, if it comes up again against Southern Indiana, and then obviously if Arkansas is feasting in the paint, then yeah, I would get a little bit more concerned of it. Um, but at least from my perspective right now, uh, I wouldn't be too, too concerned about, um, how LaSalle scored most of their points in the paint. All right, 40 more minutes of basketball, 40 more on Friday against Southern Indiana before that ACC-SEC challenge with a really awesome game coming up between Duke and Arkansas. What are you wanting to see on Friday night? What does Duke need to do to really make sure they're ready? Uh, get up early, get the starters out, and don't get hurt. And I say that with all sincerity as well. Southern Indiana, they're 1-5 in five out of the Ohio Valley Conference. Um, they did push LaSalle. They only lo lost by one to LaSalle and then lost by double figures to Bucknell um, in this Blue Devil Challenge. Um, their one win came against a non-D1 opponent in Tiffin, um, and they won that game by three. Uh, they do have a common opponent outside of LaSalle and Bucknell in Michigan State, uh, and they lost by that game by 23 points, and that was when Michigan State was coming off of uh, their tough opening night loss to James Madison. So um, I think Duke... Um, it will cruise in this game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we saw what happened um, with Kyle Filipowski against Bucknell with that uh, slipping on the floor and going down with a turned ankle. So um, if I'm John Shire, um, ride your starters in the first half for about 15 minutes, um, ride them about five, get up big, ride them about five minutes in the second half, and then get some of the young guys in, getting them some experience. It'd be great if Christian Reeves could play. Um, hasn't been eligible or hasn't been available, I should say, to play with um, lower leg injury uh, past couple games. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah, just just keep keep the big guys out of harm's way, and uh, then start your focus for for what could be your toughest game of the season, um, regardless non conference or out of conference or conference play uh, against Arkansas. Yeah, hopefully the Stoop team doesn't eat too much. Certainly enjoy Thanksgiving tomorrow, but uh, don't eat too much. You need the body to be fresh and ready to go on Friday night against Southern Indiana. With that said, I'm very much so putting you on the spot here, Kevin, but what are you thankful for in the Duke basketball world? Give me one thing you're thankful for in this Duke basketball world, man. I'll, I'll give you two. Okay. Uh, the sophomores. The sophomores <laughs> coming back in Kyle Filipowski, uh, Tyrese Proctor, um, Mark Mitchell and um, uh, them come back and then Jeremy Roach as well. Um, and then you, you have to go with John Shire being the head coach. Um, I don't think anyone could have scripted this smooth of a transition from Mike Krzyzewski to John Shire, both on the court and off the court with recruiting. So um, I think those are the two things uh, that you have to be thankful for with the Duke basketball team. I'm putting the recruiting efforts out there as well because, man, it's a whole lot of fun to be talking about premier, premier, premier recruits that are considering their basketball careers there at Duke. Well, Kevin, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, my friend. Thank you for taking time to be on the show once again this week and every single week throughout the season. Really do appreciate it. We'll talk soon, okay? Likewise, JJ. Happy Thanksgiving. All right, that's Kevin Connolly joining us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, and that's going to do it for another episode here today. We will be back with you tomorrow. A Thanksgiving edition of Lockdown Blue Devils is coming your way, talking about everything going on 
in the life of Duke Athletics. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.